The berserkers in the Vikings were said to be uncontrollable, bloodthirsty warriors whose only emotions were rage and a lust for blood. They were said to have fought in battle with a trance-like fury, tearing enemies limb from limb and never yielding, even when struck in what would normally have been a fatal blow. Legends have it that in order to reach this level of invulnerability and sheer madness, berserkers would need to undergo something of a symbolic death, which would lead to a symbolic resurrection in order to unlock these sacred powers. Bearing in mind, berserkers were just normal men once upon a time, but in order to reach that higher power, they would enter the wilderness and live life as their totem animal would, some choosing a bear or a wolf. Whilst under this strange training, they would aim to strip themselves of their humanity to the point that they were indeed more animal than human. By some accounts, the Vikings who became berserkers would divide into two groups. The group who chose the bear as their totem animal would become known simply as the berserkers. Meanwhile, those who chose the wolf would become known as the Ulethnar. For the sake of this video though, and to prevent everyone's ears from bleeding from my pronunciation of that word, I'll simply be referring to them as one group, under the name Berserkers. Some accounts note that the Berserkers would wear the hides of their totem animal around them, so as to serve not only as warmth and to embed themselves in the animal, but also to caution those who they came across that they had gone beyond the confines of humanity and were, in essence, now a predator of animalistic nature. Other accounts indicate that the Berserkers would drink the blood of their totem animal, so as to fully integrate their own physiologies with that of the beast. Once the training was complete, they would enter the battlefield and go absolutely nuts, hacking down enemies with the same ferocity as a wild animal. As they had stripped themselves for human emotion, this meant that they had no fear, no reserve, and barely any moral standing at all, which meant they would stop at nothing until the enemy was entirely vanquished. Some accounts have it that these berserkers would even enter the battlefield with no armour, no shields, and sometimes just their bare fists swinging left and right. In some cases, the berserkers were said to have even bitten down on their shields, tearing chunks of the wood out with their teeth. It's surreal to think about being on the other side of the battlefield, staring at a hulking man who just ripped a bit of his own shield out with his mouth, but it would certainly link with the berserkers' goal of dehumanising himself and becoming more animal as he gnawed and snapped at everything, even his own weapon. Through these sorts of conceptions, it's easy to associate berserkers with the process of dehumanization that they were said to want to achieve. Other accounts suggest that the berserkers drew their strength from the god Odin, and that they would become psychologically impervious to pain through the virtue of their belief in him. Considering themselves as devotees of the god, their beliefs may have served to fuel them with a certain ecstasy and inspiration that saw them go above and beyond in the heat of battle where other men may have simply conceded. An Icelandic historian and poet named Snorri Sturluson once said of them, Odin's men rushed forward without armour, were as mad as dogs or wolves, bit their shields and were as strong as bears or wild oxen, and killed people at blow, but neither fire nor iron told upon them. However, there is another theory presented by a 1784 priest named Udman, who believed that the state of going berserk was the result of men in the wilderness eating agaric mushrooms. White agaric has since been suggested to cause berserk fury and sometimes hallucinations. Such hallucinations may have given the berserkers the illusion of invincibility or divine strength, so in essence, their prowess on the battlefield may have simply just been a false sense of confidence. The mushrooms can also lead the user to feel apathetic, which could explain how berserkers were so able to inflict so much pain upon others without feeling remorse or grossed out by their own bloody hands. Mushrooms, however, have never been mentioned in the sagas, so there could always be some truth to the Viking ritual of becoming an animal. Another explanation for going berserk can be explained in a psychiatric sort of fashion. The theory has it that groups of warriors would enter a ritual process that would induce them into a hypnotic state. It was in this state that they lost conscious control of their own actions and were then directed by perhaps their chief, or someone in charge, to go and fight. In this disassociative state, the berserkers were operating on a subconscious level, so much so, that they would have a reduced awareness to pain. 
a more supernatural belief exists that seeks to explain the achievement of the Berserker's trance through ritualistic dance, possession by Odin, or possession by the spirit of animals, in which the body is overcome by these spirits and turned into a vessel made for utter destruction. However, given that we still do not understand such hypnosis, and have never been able to replicate something of the sort since, with all the modern science we have, it's hard to believe that this theory has much merit. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Until the next time guys.